Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have again from the Ala shop the Korats because when I did a video about the Korat power supplies, well, it was actually a comparison sort of of usability between the Rigel, the Sigland, and the Korat. And people got interesting uh, about the uh, about the Korat because there is not too much uh, to find about them. So I thought I will do another one and then I show the models that there are. So these are them close by. We already had a look at uh, Cal 2020, this one, but there is also a 2010. It is exactly the same size, but instead of 500 watts, it does 300 watts. But maybe what is the most interesting is the bigger one here in the bottom. This is the strongest that they have. It's also 40 amps, 150 volts, but 1500 watts. And there is also a 2030 and it's exactly the same size, but that is made for a thousand watts. So let's have a closer look and I'm allowed to open them. And if you think, well, those electronic loads look very familiar. Yes, there are also rebrands or rebatched. And uh, I found one with the brand name uh, Impact. And I found that on Element 14, but I didn't find a real website of this uh, Impact uh, company. And also the Multicom Pro I found on uh, RS and on Farnell. But also those brands, I didn't find a real website. Then I found another brand that is uh, Stamos. And Stamos, I also doubt that they built the device themselves because they sell mainly welding equipment. So that makes me think that uh, it is really from Kaurat themselves, this uh, brand. So that is the original brand, I think. And if you think, well, it looks also a lot like the GWN stack. Well, I think we can easily agree that that is probably completely different quality, but yes, they also look the same. Okay, that doesn't look bad inside at all. One huge heat sink, well, the big ventilator. We did hear that. And it is kind of mounted here on a metal frame. And that's why maybe it sounds a bit. But um, when you put it in, in the 19 in rex, you don't, uh, you hear it a lot less already, I noticed. And here we have, well, it's a 0 0.1 resistor and a FET, and that duplicates many, many, many times. And here we have the same. This is the 500 watt model. So, uh, it has more. The, the, the 300 watts is the same size, but I expect that they just left out a few of these uh, fats or they're just limited by the software. But we can have a closer look, but everything is nicely here. With glue, everything is stuck, nice shrimp racks everywhere. I'm actually surprised, it looks good. I saw this with HP, I think also, or some of the Fluker that I put the switch in the back with it closely to where uh, it makes sense. And then you don't need to go with your high voltage to your low voltage area. But then they have this huge arm and look at it. And you just switch on and off with this arm. I was always surprised how long this actually lasts. Well, it's a proven because, uh, yeah, HP was also doing this. But all the connections look so good here also on the housing. All the cables, everything is stuck. When we tilt it over, we see a lot better. Heat sink, heat sink, heat sink. So it seems like there is uh, sufficient uh, cooling air. And on the other side, that is actually where we burn the power. Look at the big connectors there. How big that is. It is made for more than just 40 amps, I think. 
look at this. Can we zoom more? Yeah, yeah, look at this. This is proper, properly done. And here even, oh, we have some extra output, outputs here. But if we look on the PCB, it's very, very big tracks there. Yeah. And now we are looking at the back of the front panel. Yeah, yeah, we have the display drivers, of course, a little battery for the RTC. Beeper. And it's all connected with this wire, but this is already the low voltage area. And somehow these two connectors here interest me, because this is the 500 watt model. And this one is, has fully all the components. So the next model they have, that is the 2030, that has a thousand watt. So you would almost think they just take exactly the same unit as this, put it here and put it in parallel and we have the connectors here. And then the biggest model, the 2040, is 1500 watts. And then you would maybe just have three of these units and all connected through this to this here, this extension connectors here. So that will be interesting to see if we open the other one. Okay, that will be interesting. I'm allowed to open them, so I will also do uh, this one. And uh, yeah, as I said, one each heatsink is maybe like 500 watts. Because this control unit you only need once. So that means half this, this cooling area the, the heatsink uh, module with all the fats. If that is 500 watts, then you would have here the same. And then you would have 500, 1000, and 1500. Of course, with three times the noise, depending if you if you have the 1000 watt version, you probably have only this one and this one. So uh, let's have a look. So this one clearly had a lot more uh, screws everywhere. Even at the ears for the 19 inch uh, rack, but uh, I have here, of course, also my Kaiweeds uh, ES20. That makes uh, this job a lot easier. And, hmm. oh yeah, three units. Yeah, that is clear. The first unit, the five or 300 watt unit is exactly the same. We see that here also. And uh, these connectors that we found here, have a look at the other one. The true screw connectors we saw here, they are using it here. here. And with these metal plates, they put the extra 500 watts and then with the two extra wires, okay, they put it here to the next module. These extra modules, 500 watt each, look a little bit different than the first module here. Here they put some extra spacer in between. I do not know exactly why they did this. Maybe there are some com components underneath that need to be cooled, that they build some sort of metal house around it, because I think this would make more noise, because of it will resonate. And in this model, somehow it was not needed, and in this model also not, but maybe there is some current measurement that they have a big shunt somewhere in here that also needs to be cooled, that I'm not sure. And you know, these models don't do that. These two seem identical. So probably our guess was that in the 1000 model, you just have these, and this is just an open space. And in the 1500, like this model is, you just have both. This is very well connected here, these two with the metal plates here. But this extra module with these two wires, I don't know, it's, it kind of looks weird. But it is from the same point there. So this is really like put extra. And we also see here, a, here in between a 10 turn pot, probably how to balance these three. This one is of course also. Here is also a 10 turn. So here we have some measurements cables that go from here to here, from here to here. Yeah, I'm still a little bit 
confused about these two wires but in the end because it is 40 amp for the whole unit so if this 40 amp is split by 3 then there is not even too much current through this and then um, all the heatsink is just for to get to a higher voltage in the end with the 1500 watts all four models do 40 amps only the power is different so you have 300 watts 500 watts 1000 watts or 1500 watts but that also means that the current will be uh, will be split in these units because it's all in parallel so instead of doing 40 amps in one unit with the 1000 watts you can do them split them over two units so it will be 20 amps and 20 amps but with this one it will be split over three then why you need so much power if the current is not that high well that is so you can run higher voltages now of course 40 amps 40 volts is 1600 so you are close to 40 volts so this will be 20 volts for the 1000 watts and then uh, only 10 volts for the 500 watts so in the end the power does matter if you want to higher voltage on this same current so then these wires are generally not that weird anymore because we are uh, around uh, 13 amps and if you remember it was uh, quite noisy when I had the test of all three of them and I did them one by one and uh, Kaurat was the one that made the most noise on the desk and also his size was pretty big especially the 1500 was really huge well looking at the size and this is the biggest one that really looked crazy big on the desk I put it now on my two drawers and it actually looks okay and noise wise is also because the noise is now underneath the desk of the soldering equipment and the noise just goes out in the back and it is all already a, a lot less and if we look on the distance here yeah, compared to the flue calibrator the 1500 01 b yeah it is actually a decent size well coming back to the noise this is what the noise was of the 500 watts on the desk let's go to this 200 watts what we did with the other ones but we have here 500 watts and so we can go a lot higher I need to keep track of my power supply and my cables if I go a lot more and now it starts to make noise and a lot now let me do a test on the place on the drawers there on the current position so I'm having a setup here with the electronic load right there I have my cables permanently right here and I mentioned in that uh, review also compared with the uh, Cyclant and the Rigol that this was the only one that came with proper cables and they are proper but then it's long enough so I just have a permanent setup like this I have here a 40 amp power supply uh, but it goes only to 15 volts so I cannot test it with the full 1500 watts but I think we can do a decent load test that we can uh, trigger the ventilators the noise that you hear now is my power supply by the way and not the electronic load because the electronic load is still completely silent so let me first start with the simple 10 amp on this 15 volts so that means we are already at 150 watts more or less yes we are let me move the cursor well it is not making any noise so we are burning now 150 watts and it is not impressed at all of course because we are on 10 percent so let's do a little bit more 300 watts well it's not really impressed yet either of course let's do 30 amps almost 500 watts most of the uh, electronic loads in this price range cannot even do this but I don't hear and there it comes and then it stops again after a while I think it either in like 10 to 15 seconds more and then it just stops again so 
yes, you will hear a little bit of sound, and it's quite a bit even, but only when necessary. When I did the 200 watts, we hear nothing. Only if we run longer, 3 or 400 watts, 500 even, then it starts. So I'm fine with that. So, and then I had to look at the fetch they uh, used. It is from International Rectifier, I think. And they can do like 50 amp each or 200 volts each. Of course, not all at the same time. And uh, if we look at one module, so the 500 watts ones, it had 14 of them in uh, parallel. And of course, the internal resistance, which is very low, by the way, it is like uh, 0.04 ohms. Uh, and of course, there is a little difference between each of these pads if you put them in parallel. And that's why what I usually do, and you can see that they put one resistor in series of each of them. And that resistor is like uh, 0.1 ohms. And that makes a slight difference between this 0, 0, 4. It doesn't matter too much anymore. So, but if you do that, you already have a resistance now of 0 0.14 ohms, which you have in series. But we put 14 of them in parallel, and then you end up with 0 0.01, which is fine enough. And if you put three of those units, so that is 42 of them, you have even 0 0.003 ohms, and that would be for the 300 watt model, because those have eight fits, I believe, from the pictures I've seen from Nico, uh, so that would be 0 0.17 ohms. But the point is, if you put enough of them in series, they are balanced perfectly. Another thing that I think that would be interesting that is to see how these three 500 watts units are balanced because we saw on these extra extension modules we saw there was a 10 turn pot and I would think that that is to see how much current they need to take. So if you are on 30 amps you want each 500 watt unit to take 10 amps. So we could actually measure that, I think. We cannot measure on the current shunt, but um, yeah, that would be probably the same as in the wire, so that doesn't matter too much. So if we can measure to the cables that go to these two extra extension units, then both should take 10. And then, of course, the third one, the first one, will take the other 10. So if we are sure that we have 30 amps there, and we measured the other two, so that will be a great other video, I think. Because I tried to contact um, Korot, they are not willing to provide the service manual or calibration manual, they just don't want to do it. Or they also didn't fabricate it themselves, or they just don't uh, do that. So that would be interesting to find out, because I want to be sure that really each module would take the same current, because the best balance is, of course, best. I could maybe do that also by putting a long load and watching with my thermal camera to see if they all three have the same heat. But of course, I like more the real numbers and then try that with the amps. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.